Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, welcome back to the channel, and the Magnum is absolutely insane guys. I never thought the day would come to where I would admit that I had more fun playing on any other class other than the Dragonite, but guys, with the recent changes to the Magnum and all the buffs and the damage, this class is absolutely nutty. It does great in duels, it does great in battlegrounds, open world, 2vx, 1vx, it doesn't matter. This class literally has everything that you could possibly want, and I may actually go back and update my tier list of putting the Magnum in the S tier. If you know how to run it right and you run the right sets, this class is an absolute menace. So without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, so not wasting any time hopping into the build. Very first thing to note, we are a Breton. You do want to run Vampirism on this build in PvP. You absolutely have to have it. The Undeath passive is too good to pass up. I'm running Breton to kind of offset that cost increase because Arctic Wind costs like 4,000. Even in five light, it costs 4,000 to cast. And it's a spell you're going to spam quite often so you need to have really really high cost reduction or you need to have really really high magic recovery which we have pretty much both on this build so we are running smoke bear haunch i think this is the best in slot now you could run uh, if you need a little bit cheaper alternative bewitch sugar skulls but you're going to have to compensate for your stamina regeneration as well as your magic regeneration throughout your build this is just the easiest way to do that running the atro like i said you're going to need hella Oh, hella recovery. So here's what our character sheet actually looks like. And then we can kind of get this guy uh, fully buffed. This isn't fully buffed in serial. You're going to have continuous attack, all the good stuff. So on the back bar, you're looking around 32k resistances. And then your physical resist 28k. With Breton passives, your spell resistance will go up to like 36,000, which is pretty nutty, if you ask me. And this is running, uh, we'll get into the the armor weights in just a moment but this is a two heavy four light one medium so crit resist pretty good spell critical 30 percent you do want your critical as high as you possibly can on your warden um if at all possible because you do have some really nice crit passes as well here's our magic and stamina recovery now again with continuous attack this will go up to around 2600 magic recovery as well as 16 or 1700 or so stamina recovery and you're going to need every bit of it. Spell damage will get up to around 6k when everything's fully proc, so that's pretty nice. A spell penetration sitting at a nice 7,000, and this will go up with one of our setups. We're running Battleorg on one of the setups, so you're going to have insane spell penetration as well on the ward, and you do have access to, to major and minor breach. One gives you 6,000, one gives you about 3,000, so that's about 9,000 tacked onto this. On top of Battleorg, which is going to give you around 10k on average, depending on you know, what ultimate you want to use. So you're going to have around 25 to like 30k spell penetration at all times, and that's why the Wharton hits extremely hard. Even though some of the tooltips seem really low, that's offset by your really high spell penetration value. All right, guys, so before we get into the sets, I want to have to ask you all a small favor. Please like, sub, comment. I haven't posted videos in quite a while, so the YouTube algorithm has put me at the bottom of the barrel. I need uh, help getting boosted back up, so much obliged, guys. So let's hop into the sets. So the very first set we're going to run is Frostbite. Now, this is an Overland set, very easy to get, very cheap. So we're running Ice Staff. If you guys do not know of the changes, go down here to Winner's Embrace. You want to be running either Dual Wield or an Ice Staff on your Warden. I highly suggest an Ice Staff because this is 12% overall damage increase across the board. Plus, you get the block mitigation and damage mitigation from wielding an Ice Staff. So, what I'm doing right now, I'm just double barring Ice Staff. I even believe in PvE, people are double barring Ice Staff. May, may not be double barring it. I think Lightning Staff, I'm, about, I'm not a PvE nerd, okay? But what I'm trying to say is Ice Staff is pretty much best in slot on most Magic of Warden builds. So, uh, go get you one. So, again, we're running frostbite if you're not for sure what frostbite does this is probably the best set you could run on your warden when it comes to damage so it gives you spell weapon damage critical but you're going to need critical chance we give you weapon and spell damage again and then the five piece increases your damage done with frost abilities by eight percent yes i know subterranean salt is not frost damage but your northern storm your ice comet anything you use for your burst is going to be ice damage but it gets better right so increases your damage done against chilled targets by four percent so Subterranean Salt, all your other abilities will get buffed by 4%, and they're also going to get buffed by applying Minor Brittle. Now, I did not know this. Um, Dragu actually pointed this out in one of his build videos. If you guys haven't checked him out, please go do so. He's a phenomenal dueler, really good content creator as well. If you go down here to your help tabs, you go to Tutorial, and you go up to Combat, okay? As soon as I can find Combat here, I may cut away because oh, there we go. So if you go to status effect, I didn't know this existed. 
I'm always crying about in my stream. I don't know what status effect is, but this is actually really beneficial, especially the status effects on percentage to apply values here. You guys can look this up yourself, but this is a good source of information. Uh, the help tab if you're new to ESO or you just need some clarity on something that's in the game more than likely it's here um, if you're on a uh, PC you can just set a filter I'm not sure if you can do that uh, with a gamepad input but uh, long story short as long as you're wielding an ice staff you're going to apply minor brittle as well I didn't know that until after reading that because I was like huh what why what 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 exactly procs minor brittle but yeah as long as you're dealing frost damage and wielding an ice staff you're gonna proc brittle so pretty much Overall damage when it comes to your Ice Comet and your Northern Soaring, we have 8% increase, 4%, 2%. You know, that's a 14% increase on that damage through your burst is absolutely nutty. Now, how I have this set up on the first build is Frost Staff. And then uh, this is the Light Armor set, by the way. So I have legs, hands, and waist. Uh, you can change this however you want. And then on our back bar, we are running Mars Bomb. Now, you can either run Mars Bomb or Rallying Cry. It's entirely up to you. They perform nearly kind of the same. I think Mars Bomb is better in Battlegrounds and Open World, while Rallying Cry is more for dueling and possibly Battlegrounds as well, maybe even Open World. I think Rallying Cry is better overall, but Mars Bomb is very niche situations when you have like four to six people on you, which, you know, Battlegrounds, typically that happens a lot. Um, you'll get more bang for your buck out Mars Bomb. If you're not sure what this does, essentially when you're you know, backpedaling on your back bar, I only have this on a back bar. Anytime a negative effect is removed or falls off, you know, the duration expires, you get healed for approximately a thousand. Now, this does go up when you have all your buffs up, the, the, uh, the tooltip. It does seem pretty low here, but it actually does go up to around 1900 or so, uh, which is pretty good. Now, um, I'm running defending right now, but you could also run power just because our resistances are so high. Uh, I also do have a weapon damage enchantment on your back bar because you proc your weapon damage on your back bar and you go to your front bar and you line up your burst thereof, okay? So that's how I like to do that. Now, when it comes to pieces, I'm running a chest, a heavy chest reinforced. That's the best way to run it. And I'm also running the jewelry to make sure I can get as much light armor as I can on this build for cost reduction as well as crit values as well. And then our other set we're running is Balorgs. Now I do have two heavy on. I think this build would function better with five light, one medium, one heavy. By the time I'm making this video, I do not have a light Balorgs head or you know whatever. So that kind of sucks. I mean, it is what it is, but uh, it does tank you up a little bit. So Balorgs, anytime you use your ultimate, per ultimate consume, you will get a, a huge burst to your weapon and spell damage as well as physical and spell penetration. On your warden, your burst is literally everything, so you need to go all in. Um, without Balorgs, it is very, very difficult to have enough damage to burst really high health targets. You don't have enough dot pressure to whittle them down, so when you go in for your burst, you pretty much have to go all in. When it comes to traits on the armor, I typically run uh, mostly well-fitted. I do have one sturdy, one reinforced, uh, one impen just because I don't have the transmute stone to change this to well-fitted. I think well-fitted is just way better than impenetrable when it comes to traits on your armor. And then we do have one more set here, Trainee, just for the extra health bump, as well as Sea Serpent Squirrel as our mythic item. You can run Marking Ring of Majesty, but Sea Serpent Squirrel is really, really strong as well. It's going to give you essentially 15% increased damage. And since everyone is snared and slowed and rooted and you have access to Major Expedition and Snare Removal, people are not likely to get away from you. So you're not really being hindered too much by the slow sea serpent squirrel while you are benefiting from the overall damage one more thing I forgot to mention running a shock enchantment now you can run shock or disease or even poisons it's entirely up to you as long as you have many status effects as possible because one of our cps is force of nature and we'll cover that here in just a minute okay guys so hopping into the skills on build number one we're gonna have sub or deep fissure we're gonna have arctic blast now deep fissure you always want to look at the tooltips always wait for the second tick to do your full burst combo this does get increased by about 50 percent okay it's almost a 50 percent increase on the second tick so it will take you a little time to kind of time out the second tick to sub train so deep fissure it's called here but it's very, very essential you time out your burst this way because that's a huge amount of damage you'll be missing out on. So typically you'll use the first hit to apply major and minor breach, which is going to decrease your spell and physical resistances by a metric crap load. And then you want to time your burst and your stun around your second tick of subterranean assault. Now, a little trick that a lot of people do not know. Let's say, for example, um, Beatles is kind of hard to hit sometimes. I, I, I see myself struggling. 
Um, it actually doesn't go in the direction your camera angle is facing. You need to actually turn your character. So what you can do, say uh, if a DK is rooted you or whatever, and you can't physically turn your character model, which is really annoying, right before your burst goes off, just line up a medium weave and it will actually turn your character to where your target is. I, I could cast it all the way out here as long as I wait. You know, look at that, turns it right around. Otherwise, if you cast it over here and you look over here and you do not do a medium attack weave, your beetles are gonna go over here and you're gonna completely miss. So being a, uh, a controller player, you need to know all these little tricks to kind of make sure you can line up your beetles because if you miss your beetles during your burst, uh, it's gonna be really embarrassing, so. And then we have Arctic Blast. Now this is a very, very good skill, but it's also very not cost efficient. This is gonna cost you 4,000 if you're a Breton with Vampirism. So you do not want to cast this too often unless you desperately need the stun uh, or you need a little bit of burst on your front bar, what have you. If you find yourself spamming this like off CC cooldown on your opponent, you will run out of Magicka really, really quick. Doesn't matter your magic recovery. So just keep in mind, this is used for setting up your burst and try not to use it for a heal. You have a much better alternatives and cost efficient spells when it comes to heals. Just use this for your stun, okay? So you may be asking yourself, Horcrux, I noticed on your front bar, why are you not running charge? Why, why are you running sharpen? So frostbite. You get all these effects when everyone is chilled, minor build, yada, yada. So it would make sense to have status effects on your opponent right well arctic blast does everything for you even with sharpened check this out you have like a 50 percent chance to proc all these status effects essentially every two times this ticks you're going to reapply these debuffs see like literally they're inflicted with brittle the entire time and vulnerability i'm not even doing anything this is with sharpened so when people tell you you need to run charge on your warden that is absolutely incorrect the only thing you have to do is make sure you're within distance of this pulsating effect from arctic wind if you're not uh you're struggling all right so you gotta kind of be closer to combat and that's why we have our next ability here you know bird of prey that kind of help with that as well again this is an aoe stun what you want to do is try to root people with this so you'll have them rooted, you know, when they have all these status effects up on them, and then you toss down your wall of Ellie. If they walk into this, they're going to get rooted, and then they're going to want to roll dodge, obviously, and then that's when you hit your Ar Arctic Wind, that's going to stun them again. So that's just a little combo for you guys. Before you go in free birds, always pop Bird of Prey, just so people can't kite you. This will give you Major Expedition, Storm Unity for 4 seconds, and Lot Slotted gives you Minor Berserk, very powerful, Crushing Shock is are spammable uh, you could use carry on diver if you really wanted to or cliff racer as, as it's called but typically you won't play up to close range on this so um, it would be better if you went with crushing shock instead of the cliff racer because you do have to be a minimal distance to get the off balance status effect and also the uh the extra 400 weapon spell damage or whatever so deep fissure i mean excuse me crushing shock can, can also apply the other status effects um concussed and also the burning status effect which really really helps and then blockade of frost you definitely be using this guy this is more of a utility um i do recommend this it's a very very strong skill it's gonna give you like a little little mini shield but what it's really going to do is just lock down your opponent so you're not having to spam your arctic win all the time just to cc getting crowd control on people as long as they have the status effects like i said and then you have your wall of ellie down as soon as they walk into it, they're going to get stunned. So you have a little bit of control. And this also helps us controller players set up our burst with our beetles because it is notoriously hard to hit people who are just like weaving in and out of you, right? So that's why this is there. It actually does do a decent amount of damage as well. Back bar, we're in blue buddy. You're going to need the magic, not so much the stamina. So plus it purges an ability uh, every uh, one second. Also, when you uh, spam cast this, Every time you cast, it will just go ahead and remove an effect anyway, and it's free to cast. So just keep that in mind. Like say if a sword puts a vicious curse on you and that's the only debuff on you, it just cast Netty and uh, it's gone. So Living Trellis, this is kind of like a pseudo spammable. You can put this on yourself or allies, preferably yourself. Uh, just keep in mind when you cast this, do not be looking at allies if you need to heal because it will apply it to them instead of you. That's got me killed many a time. Resolving Vigor, uh, good healing over time gives you access to minor uh, resolve as well. Ice Fortress, this is your spell resistance buff and as well it gives you minor protection. And then this is your flex spot on the back. You can either use Lotus Blossom, uh, which is really good for dueling, um, which is pretty much only good for dueling. It does give you crit on both bars, which is very, very strong. A Shimmering Shield is very, very powerful. You're pretty much gonna have major heroism the entire time. And if you follow the channel, 
I do use minor heroism potions on my Dragonite, so if you have access to those, you toss those on the warden, you're going to have your ultimate like literally every 20 seconds with Shimmering Shield. And it's pretty nutty, I'm not going to lie. Um, the, your other alternative, which I would suggest, is going to be if you are by yourself not playing with the team, I would do Budding Seeds. What you used to be able to do with Budding Seeds is you could cast it over here. It's a huge heal, by the way. And you could recast it, even though the heal's over there, it would still heal you. I don't think that works this patch. You have to actually be inside the circle, which is really unfortunate, but I know you could do that. If you guys are unfamiliar with what Budding Seeds does, uh, it's just a healing over time, then you can reactivate it to heal yourself. If you need a burst heal, please use this. Notice it gives you like a 10k burst heal, right? And it will uh, like a 12k burst heal, right? And it only costs 2,000 when you go over to Arctic Wind. Um, it's damn near double. So if you need a burst still, definitely go with Budding Seeds. But if you are in group play, like Battlegrounds or an open world, definitely go with Corrupting Pollen, which is the other more for this. You'll still get the burst seal, but you cannot activate it. But people entering this big old AoE is inflicted with Major Defile and Minor Cowardice, which is so, so strong, guys, especially when you're in the higher MMR brackets and everyone's just a big clusterfuck in the middle of the map. This is really, really annoying to play against. And then last but not least, Northern Storm. Now, this will go up to a really, really high value. This will be taking like 4K every single second. I would probably go with this over Ice Calm. Ice Calm is going to be there in case you just really need to burst like one target. But if you're going to run into a group of people, definitely go with Northern Storm because on top of Balor giving you the extra spell damage and spell penetration, this is also going to give you an additional 300 spell damage as well for a very, very long time. It's going to give you major protection for you and your team. And it does hellacious frost damage. It slows everyone. You're going to hit your beetles even if you're not trying. On top of everything else you have going on, Northern Storm is very, very, very powerful. You saw one of the beginning clips of the, the video that I was able to turn on three guys with Northern Storm, no problem. Like just completely melted them. The, the damage from Northern Storm is very, very deceptive. And I forgot to go over Ice Comet on the front bar. Uh, obviously, when Ice Comet because um, everything's buffed you know ice damage by frostbite you know hence the uh the title of the video the thumbnail and uh yeah all right guys so hopping into a build number two here we're going to equip the uh the secondary build and pretty much the champion points are going to be the same which we have not covered yet but we the gear is going to change a little bit instead of balorgs you'll want to run five frostbite on the body so right now i have the head and shoulders of frostbite you know just to make up you know for the staff just to make things easier everything else is still the same mars bomb as well as you know medium boots of training just so you have your your 511 so all this is here all this is still the same the only thing that is different really is the master's perfected ice staff instead of balor which is pretty much what we're swapping it for and what you want to do on this build is very very similar to the last one except uh you're instead of running a blockade you know, elemental blockade you want to run destructive clinch on your front bar essentially this is a guaranteed route and it always applies all the status effects and it's going to increase your uh, weapon and spell damage by 600 when you cast it every single time you cast it that's a hellacious amount you can almost use this as your spammable if you really wanted to i'm actually kind of curious to see what your weapon and spell damage gets up to so yeah this will get well beyond uh 6k in Cyrodiil, which is uh which is pretty nice so just like the other build the combo is very similar you're gonna wait for your second tick right before you go in for your burst you want to have clinch on they're going to be rooted. They're going to want to roll dodge, and then you're going to activate Arctic Wind into your Meteor, into your Subterranean Assault. Everything's going to hit the exact same time. So I'm just going to show you guys what this is going to look like. You're going to wait for your second tick. Do your thing. Do your thing. Do your clinch. Meteor, they're going to try to roll dodge, and then you activate Arctic Wind again. You're going to stun them, and they're going to take your Beetles. They're going to take all the dot damage. They're going to take an Ice Comet right to the face, and hopefully something crits. Usually when the Ice Comet crits, it's going to hit 13 to 15k. It hits really, really hard, guys. So... That is the second build if you have access to a perfected ice staff. This is also much better in duels, come to find out. Um, back bars is going to be the exact same thing. Really nothing changes. Be sure you still do have your undaunted, you know, your 511 to make sure you can get the most magicka health and stamina as physically possible. All right, guys, so hopping into the champion points again. Build 1, build 2 is going to be pretty much the exact same thing. We're running Ironclad. You could possibly swap Ironclad out for a Focus Mending. That's entirely up to you if you need more healing instead of mitigation. Um, Biting Ores, this is going to increase the area of effect damage. This is Beetles. This is going to be Northern Storm. This is Ice Comet. I think Biting Ores is an absolute must. And then we have Mastered Arm. Now, this is uh, kind of a flex spot, but this is our direct damage attacks. You know, this is going to be our spammable, uh, the initial hit 
a beetle, uh, excuse me, the initial hits of blockade of frost is going to apply to this, a meteor, you know, a force of nature. Now, force of nature is going to increase our offensive penetration by quite a bit. Now, you do have access to, I believe, five different stats effects on this build. Um, the only thing you don't have access to, I think off the top of my head, is bleed damage, but everything else you have access to on this build. So pretty much multiply this by five. We'll just say on average five. I think there's seven different stats effects. So you're essentially getting, uh, what is that, six times five, like 3,000 extra pin from this, which equates to you know, five, almost 6% uh, increase overall damage, which is uh, pretty, pretty strong. Now I'll go over into our red tree. Now, if you're in open world, you can adjust this however you want, but I always go with survival instincts because this is amazing because you're always going to have some sort of stats effect on you. This is going to make your roll dodge, break freeze, blocks, your interrupts, your bashing, whatever costs 25% less, which is incredible. Relentlessness for when you get stunned, you get major protection. Yes, I know you get major protection from Northern Storm, but that only lasts like eight or nine seconds. So what do you do in the meantime, right? Pain's Refuge, this is going to increase your damage mitigation for 2% for every two negative effects on you. Now I do realize we have access to Mars Bomb. That is just really nice to have because it's a nice cleanse. It's a nice you know, kind of healing over time. Yes, it's going to Persian, but odds are people are just going to dot you right back up. So this champion point won't be too wasted. And then sustained by suffering, this is going to give you recoveries in all three pools. When you have a negative effect on you, trust me, you're going to need it when it comes to magic sustain on the Warden because you will your abc's always be casting right you will be casting constantly i've never <laughs> i've never usually like on the dk you know you got a little bit of downtime you can kind of chill on the warden you need to constantly reapply buffs and debuffs line up your burst you gotta have a it, you're always casting things okay that's what i'm trying to say when it comes to green stuff i look at efficiency warm out give to rider steeds blessing that's pretty much uh you know just kind of quality of life stuff and uh yeah guys that is going to do it for the build. Um, please like and sub if you haven't already. If you have any questions or any critiques that, or anything you think I missed, please let me know down in the comments. I'll pin them uh, if necessary, guys. Also, do not forget, I need clips for PvP Top 5, all right? There's a link down below in the description as well as, you know, a, a bunch of stuff. If you want to support the channel, get some one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching. Shoutouts in all my videos and uh, all that good stuff you can become a youtube member here uh, which is um, pretty dope it's only a couple bucks you know a month and you get, you get access to emojis you know everything i just mentioned and if you're really gonna go above and beyond you know i do have a patreon if you guys want to help support me there it'd be much appreciated it is the holidays i would like a few extra bucks to get my girlfriend and you know some goodies but uh it is what it is but i hope you guys had a great thanksgiving or still having a great thanksgiving i know there's a lot of leftovers a lot of turkey stuffing ham um my my girlfriend had chicken I'm like who has chicken on thanksgiving but uh i mean to each their own anyways i stuck with outros so uh bye